All right, guys. Oh my goodness. So I'm sitting here and I'm like giggling and like extra smiles because our next guest, I was reading through her bio and we connected, but you know, it was kind of a low key connection. You know, I see some things she's doing, things like that. And um, I know that she's the publisher for Swag Her Magazine, and I had an article with her in Swag Her Magazine. So you kind of see some things, but then when your eyes really get open to, oh, oh, she, oh, she, she's a bad mama jamma. She better, she, she's a bad mother. She better shut your mouth. That's what she is. <laughs> <laughs> you you really get to understand that oh my goodness there are some amazing people doing some awesome things and you never know somebody's story until you take the opportunity to sit down and learn it you never know somebody's story or what somebody has come through what somebody is is going through so Francesca Fancy Felder is the owner of Fancy Thoughts LLC, which publishes Swag Her Magazine, an online and print empowerment and lifestyle publication for the new Black Progress community. Initially, the magazine was solely for women of color when it started in 2010, but she rebranded, including male content after the murders of Alton Sterling and Philandro Castile that occurred in 2016. Fancy's passion for all things creative combined with her love for writing, Black people and business guided her to also offer her public relations, creative and branding services, making the magazine more of a media boutique, having its own subscription clients as well as advertisers. The former teen mom graduated from Southwest Mississippi Community College with her associates in marketing management and is three hours shy of completing her bachelor's degree in mass communications with a focus in public relations from Southern University A&M College. Did I, did I, I'm sorry, let me pause. Did I tell you that she was a bad man majama? Oh, okay. I'll continue. Francesca chose the name Fancy as her stripper name during hard times, relocating to Baton Rouge after community college, and then continued to use it when she started the magazine. A year later, as many of her connections started in the club, those connections ignited her desire to be business woman, but also revealed to her how hard it can be for a black woman in business and life. She realized the importance of women sharing their stories to inspire and educate others. In 2014, their stories to inspire and educate, uh, no, in 2014, her connections and self-love journey led her to Atlanta, Georgia. Y'all know everything's happening in Atlanta right now, right? During which the Time Magazine experienced significant growth. However, she returned home to Macomb, Mississippi, and then back to Baton Rouge, LA in 2016. Somewhat of an introvert, Fancy is known for her charming but genuine character. After many personal disappointments and failures, she understood that we are only given one life. And it is what you make it. The self-professed goddess realizes she has lived an eventful life and openly shares about her experiences on various su subjects, such as business, entrepreneurship, blogging, branding, inspiration, self-love, homelessness, teen mom, domestic violence, black unity and growth, and mental health, anxiety, depression, mindset, lifestyle, strip club addiction. Through her years of interviewing powerful women and men searching for the ingredients to success, Fancy now believes that true success is when one is strong enough to love and forgive themselves and be who they uniquely are. In her free time, the trap enthusiast enjoys spending time with her teens and tween, working on self, writing poetry with hopes of performing spoken word and deep conversations about politics. The disconnect between the black man and woman and building our own Wakanda with other deep thinkers, innovators, and social preneurs while learning how to live with fibromyalgia and control her mental health. She hopes to publish her first memoir by 2019 and aims to be a light within the Black community. I'm sorry, did I say it again? Did I tell you that she was a bad man, Majama? Like, I read her bio a good five times because I just said, Wow. 
when you go back and are able to open up an opportunity for someone else. See, you know, she talks about PR and, you know, public relations, but when we think about it, guess what? Her life, that's what it has been. That's what it has been. Each and every step of the way, that's what it has been. Because guess what? As you gather up each and every experience and bring them together, you're looking at, yes, yeah, this is the life. This is what we're looking at. When we're seeing the different people that are going and becoming celebrities and their actresses and their actors and the people that are in a high level, when it comes to that aspect, that's what's going on. Some of them hide their past, others don't. But in all reality, that's the, the life that a lot of them have lived. So I want to say, I want to scream from the mountaintops, but I don't want to bust nobody's eardrums. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of this summit. And wow. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. I know you're about to take it away, so I'm just going. <laughs> Hey, look, you almost kind of like build me up in a way. And like I said, this is my first event, so I'm almost kind of like, dang, you know, is she actually talking about me? Also, <laughs> I also probably need to know, and um, just listening to you, because I, I always write my bio, and I kind of don't, um, I don't like to read it, really, after I write it. So then I was like, okay, for one, I noticed some errors I need to fix, but I also realized I also need to update. But overall... I mean, it's still all true. And so I just, I just want to know those things. But, um, and then I didn't even realize that I talked about, like, when you mentioned the, the strip club addiction, I, I was like, oh my God, I didn't put that in there, didn't I? But, I, but at the same time, I, I think it is something that we need to be discussing because I think it's something that a lot of people don't know about. However, with you having started, um, you know, with you sharing that much of my story already as it is, then you kind of see, like, how it kind of, I guess, maybe can kind of let others see how I look at things when I'm trying to to select our features and so on for the magazine. So what I was talking, I plan to talk about today was the different ways that you can work with the media as well as um, like how to continue that, like how to maximize that media coverage as opposed to just like getting that feature and then just having it there and not really knowing how to use it until you decide to do something else. So. I guess kind of because I still think it is important to kind of share a little about my story um, also because it kind of ties into everything because everything I do, I kind of feel like it's, it's, it's purpose. I believe that everything that has occurred in my life is a part of what I was supposed to be doing. You know, it's all supposed to lead me to a bigger purpose. So my whole experience, you know, like with the beginning of the magazine and starting out in a strip club because I, I didn't really uh, know much about business and just trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do. And then first my focus was in PR, but then, uh, people kind of suggested that I, that I interview like, you know, a lot of the local celebrities. And since I was in a club that allowed me to be able to do that, but kind of going up from there also, while I, while I was in the club, I was also working another little side business and I got to meet all these awesome business women. And I'm originally from Macomb, Mississippi. I don't know if anyone knows where Macomb is. Like <laughs> most people, when they think of Mississippi, they think of Jackson or the coast, but Macomb is kind of like uh, an hour and a half from Jackson. So it's like a really small town. And when I moved to Baton Rouge, it was kind of like a culture shock almost, just meeting people. I hadn't ever saw uh, that many black businessmen and business women, especially not business women. So I was really intrigued, but I really kind of felt like well, for one, most of the women that I interacted with, you know, outside of the club, they were on a, a whole other level. They're still on a level that I'm trying to get to. But what I really had to learn was that, you know, those where they were, that didn't come easily for them. They still had their own trials and tribulations. And so oftentimes I would get like really upset with myself or I get like depressed. And then they share these stories with me and they just, you know, like, really share you know like i don't like things to be sugar-coated like tell me what it is so that i can really kind of be prepared also it also um helps i think when we tell it like it is so that other people can know that they're not alone with things because oftentimes i think when we do the sugar-coated stories that people think you know um it's supposed to like that 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 breakthrough is supposed to be easy. And it really took me a lot of years. I mean, even after I started the magazine in 2010, it still took me a lot of years to grasp the concept of that because I kept thinking that everything would come quick. And then uh, here I am now, nine years later, and I'm just like, you know what? Like before I would just work uh, 
clock and around the clock thinking that, oh, I can make this happen overnight. And then now I'm just at this point where as I look back on things and I'm like, hey, I've missed so much of my kids' lives. I've missed so much of my own life, you know, just trying to make certain that I was, that I, you know, I just thought that if I kept working nonstop that that was going to change things dramatically. And I've had to realize that that's just not the case. So whenever I'm looking at a story or I'm trying to, you know, select the person for the magazine, I like to like really look at them in full. Um, oftentimes, you know, people might pitch us or, they might have a publicist to pitch us. And of course, if there's a publicist pitching us, then I'm a little bit more intrigued because that means that person has also invested a little more into themselves or they're of a different, um, I don't want to say social status because that's not always the case. And sometimes it might be somebody, cousin, their auntie, whoever the case, you know, whomever that's actually pitching us as their so-called publicist. I do get that. I mean, after nine years, you start, <laughs> you start to catch on to the little tricks of things. But I think that oftentimes people think, you know, that their that their story isn't enough for media or, you know, that it's not worth telling. And my whole thing is some of my some of the people that I've featured in the past that I enjoyed the most were those people that just really like share it like it is, that talk about, you know, pulling themselves out of the trenches and just moving forward with their lives. And then also I noticed that a lot of times um, people don't necessarily know how to tell their story in a manner that it actually comes to a conclusion. Like, okay, you did this, this, and this. You know, your dog died, you did so-and-so, so-and-so, you did da-da-da, but did you win? And I think that people oftentimes forget that there's two things that people love. Drama, I mean, of course, they love more than this, but they love drama and they love wins. And the magazine is a positive magazine. Now, we have, of course, in this political climate, we have become more informative and more educational, but... I try to make certain that we still keep it on an inspirational level. Like I want people to be able to take something from your story and be able to apply it to them, to themselves, you know, to be able to figure out how they can get ahead in life or, or bring some type of sense of healing or, you know, just, just something that actually that they can use. I don't want them to just be, you know, just reading. So I try to keep like a lot of the gossip and things like that um, out of the magazine. However, so right. Our stories can others. So I said that um, I came up with, it's a, actually a list of seven ways that, that you can um, work with the media. And then two of those ways are actually like, they kind of have like a part A and a part B. So of course, I've kind of been discussing the, the aspect of the publicist pitching you or you pitching yourself. But if you're going to pitch yourself, then make certain that you have some type of angle with it because angles are important in PR. So again, like don't just tell me your whole life story because people often do this when I'm out like they'll start telling me their whole life story but I'm still waiting to see why exactly they told me I love to learn about people but I don't necessarily know and especially having been in this business this long sometimes I'm like okay are they telling me this because they want me to interview them or are they just telling me this because they have stuff going on you know so I'm trying to figure out what it is that they're trying to do exactly and sometimes I mean and again I guess that's just kind of me because I always go into business mode as you can kind of see again like if I had known that we could give our inspirational stories I would have kept another piece but <laughs> so that's with um that's what my first uh, nugget was to pitch yourself or use your publicist and then also of course there that you can there I'm sorry you can buy media placement and I know that from a publicist standpoint people oftentimes don't like to buy media placement like a lot of publicists see it as a bad thing but I don't see a problem with that because a lot of the times like your brand just may not be as well known you know you may not be within the the circles or the status that you need to be in just yet. So that media placement that you purchase is actually good for you because it's going to be good for, you know, if you're, the whole thing for me in media is to be able to see how either, and of course I like for it to be beneficial, but when I'm looking at someone, if I'm going to do like a free feature, then I'm going to be looking at their network and trying to see who I can, you know, like what is their target market? Like how can I pull from their following or their tribe and then make that beneficial for me? Then if you're going to, buy the media placement of course you'd also want to do the same thing with me you know you don't want to buy media placement and it's not you know like you have some other type of business that doesn't exactly align with our readers then what would be the whole purpose of that but also and I just kind of went away from my notes <laughs> but um also 
with the media placement both times you want to check out who it is that you're planning to work with as well as they're going to check you out as well but the media placement can be whether it be advertisement or whether it be um like an actual interview those type of things so that's two ways and then of course i think that more people are catching on now because it is like growing to be more of a trend i know that i that we We've been receiving more requests, but guest blogging is a third way that you can also work with the media. And I think this is a really cool way. I don't think a lot of people um, are using it as much as they could be. But if you're trying to brand yourself as a speaker or a leader or a specialist or whatever the case may be within your field or industry, why not guest blog? You know, why not reach out to media that aligns with the art, the audience that you're trying to, to you know, accomplish or gather or already have? then reach out to a media outlet that goes along with that and then you're able to be able you know you can kind of um and not kind of it actually does really help with raising your awareness there like making certain that people know who you are because someone might see you or you know they're interested in your blog and then they may start following you or they may want to purchase a coaching coaching package or whatever the case may be so guest blogging is a third way that you can also work with the media and i also think that this is, is another good way too because you can also use this with your portfolio and with all of these ways. So I suggest using them, you know, adding them to your portfolio, make it certain that you're putting these projects and partnerships on your website, make certain you have them on your link tree. If you have media kits or press kits, make certain that you're adding a link to that or a visual or whatever the case may be, because the whole thing is for me or, and also for others, when you're working with the media, you're trying to build up your credibility. So it's good to have that, to say, hey, I did you know, A, B, and C, so why not me for D, or whatever the case may be. So guest blogging is the third option. Um, my fourth one is event sponsors and media partners. And that kind of goes, I, I listed, initially I listed those two separately, but then I started thinking because for us at Swagger Magazine, we um we offer event packages where it's like you know if the event is a uh, inaugural event or you know people again and it kind of it always kind of goes back to the, to these two things is it going to be beneficial to us to pull from your network or should we be you know charging basically and i guess i i, I do sometimes feel a little a little some kind of way about charging because sometimes i hear really good stories but at the same time because I am a business and I do have to pay people and I do have to pay you know uh, bills and other expenses I have kids I have to make certain that we are able to still function but the good thing about that is like either you can um, work with the media with them being say like a press sponsor or a media sponsor or you can partner with them whereas you can possibly you all take it as a joint venture or maybe you're just using their name you know like going under their name so uh i actually listed i saw that come in i'm sorry i listed that as a media partner itself so event sponsors and media partners are a fourth option and then another option that we're actually trying to get more into is content creation because i love to watch things and not necessarily know it's an ad but or you know or read something and not necessarily know it is know that it's an ad and that kind of goes back to guest blogging in some ways as well but i think for what i'm uh, wanted to do more with content creation is to be able to like uh, include product placement or we do some type of skit uh, or a sketch or something along the lines of that and then we're implementing your brand into that some type of way of course a lot of times you also might see things like on Instagram when someone's drinking the tea and then they got the lit you know they talk about how tight they were da, da, da. then you see the ad right there but that is still what I would consider to be content creation it's also a sponsored post as well but you all created that together. Obviously, you all had to come together to produce whatever that may be. So, um, also some other ideas I have for content creation is I noticed that infographics are doing really well right now. And I even found like an article that was a few years old, but uh, infographics have actually been popping. It seems like a lot longer than what I know of. <laughs> but I think that infographics are a great way to create a content creation. Again, especially if you're branding yourself as a specialist or, a, you know, a, um, or an expert within a certain field and you can take that knowledge and work with the media to be able to help them to create something along the lines of that i can't think of the um of the company but it's a finance company that reaches out to us a lot and what they'll do is like they do all these studies 
about like the best cities to find jobs, uh, the the best places to live, you know, or the most uh, cost efficient places to live. And they'll send me over these infographics. And of course I publish them because of course I like people love to be able to actually like, I mean, even if you're not a math person, because I'm an English person, I hate math. But when you can see that visual, when you can see the numbers and just scroll through and see the information like that, then that's always good because of course it's really hard to hold people's attention in this day and age. So infographics are a great way to produce content creation together. Yeah, and see, I still am not on Pinterest, but I do need to, <laughs> I do need to get on there. Like I, we have a Pinterest, but it's, um, it's just linked to the account. So sometimes I see things like that people may have liked or whatever the case may be, but I hadn't just really been working it the way I should. So I'm glad that you mentioned, mentioned that. And Jermaine will actually mention that the other day. So. <laughs> but the, um, let me see. So I have the content creation and then product placement. And product placement kind of goes back to the, um, to the content creation, as I just mentioned before. But with the product placement, I think there's product placement, whereas like you're actually creating something and then there's product placement whereas you're getting your products uh, viewed via different ways. And I guess maybe I should say different avenues, such as um, if say you're a designer, you know, and the media company wants to use your clothes or whatever the case may be for a photo shoot, then that's product placement for you. Um, I don't think that people, I know, I think, like a product placement it also has to be like a really good working relationship because you got to make certain that that person is going to be able to be trusted with your merchandise but i think that it is a good opportunity that a lot of people miss out on because they're waiting for someone to actually purchase whatever the case may be but again the reason why i'm sharing these steps is of course i mean you could always pay for the placement but there are other avenues that you can use to be able to get yourself into these mediums so that you're continuing to, uh, to spread awareness of your brand or gaining that exposure and that press. Because at the end of the day, you can't, for, especially if you're in the speaking industry or again, if, like, if you're trying to be a coach, it's a lot harder to try to tell people, oh, I can do this. And then there's nothing. The first thing people are going to do is Google you, nine out of 10. And when they Google you, when you have that media placement behind you, you know, you know, those different links and all the things that you've done, that's always a great look. That makes people start to think, hey, I might can charge, you know, I might have to actually pay for this. Or you might yourself can charge more for whatever the service it is that you have, as opposed to just being that one person that has an Instagram or that just has a website, you know, and there's nothing else about you because in this day and age, especially in the age of branding and everybody's talking about branding, people don't just want to know what it is that you're selling. They want to know who is the person that's selling it. They want to know who is the person that created it. You know, they want to know about you. It's basically like you're going to have to sell yourself to them first before you're able to sell whatever it is that you're trying to sell to them. So, I just think that people need to work more with the media. And I'm not going to lie, even as, um, as a publisher, I oftentimes feel like that, especially because we kind of delve, of course, we delve between the celebs and then we also delve between those who are aspiring individuals. And oftentimes I kind of feel like we get this little brush off or something from celebs because a lot of times they don't necessarily like, they don't see it as an honor because we incorporate you know, I guess what they would call regular people into the magazine as well. But for us, it is a big deal because I don't see two story. Like I don't, I feel like every story is important, but again, it is a matter of time and the resources that we put into it. But I said it to say, I oftentimes feel like a lot of times people might brush off the media or they might forget that it's oftentimes the media that help them to get to wherever it is that they are today. And so it seems like it's, kind of be like a battle back and forth especially in this day and age it seems um almost as if i'm trying to think of the right way to put it but i guess it's almost like kind of forgetting who helped you get into the place that you're in you know so look i don't even know why <laughs> i just it just kind of slipped my mind as to why i even went into that but overall i'm sharing my seven tips which is pitch yourself or have your publicist pitch by media placement, um, whether that be the features of the ads, you can offer guest blogging, you can offer event sponsorship or media partnership, um, you can create, con create content together. And then there's also the options of product placement and, and then that kind of goes along with the content creation. Sorry. 
Oh no, you did fine. But I want to ask the question, you know, um, a lot of times when it comes to thinking about media, when people first start their business, oh my goodness, media is like so far away from, you know, where they think they are. They're kind of scared. They're like, do I have enough? Um, do I know enough? Can I say enough? So somebody who's just in the beginning stages, what would be your encouragement for them to reach out to the media, even if they're maybe in their first year? I would say it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be either a win or it's going to be an interesting backstory. You know, like for me, like I, I, don't, I don't think this was in my bio, but for most of last year, I was homeless. Like I was homeless up until October, but I took that as something that I'm going to continue to use into my brand story. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm not just going to let that be like, Hey, you know what? Like, do you understand what I had to do just to be here today? And so you have to make people see that you have to pull at their, either at their emotions or, or either, um, and I'm trying to think a lot of people are sold on self-interest. You know what I mean? Like, how is this beneficial to them? So if you already have a good following or, you know, you have a good niche market, then oftentimes people will still work with you with just with that. But again, it's about how, basically how, I think you had someone mentioned leveraging. It's how you leverage it, you know? So that would be my advice. <laughs> Definitely. And then there was a question in the comments that talked about um, sponsorship and, and how would you approach getting sponsorship? Oh, okay. And I realized just as she's, um, just as I saw that, what I did mention is that well, whereas we have the paid packages, we also do like, if this, this is an event that we definitely want to be a part of, then the media and I mean, this is from my perspective, but of course I think other media outlets do it as well. Then they might just be interested in it, you know? Um, but I would still kind of say, whether you're going to give them something like logo placement within your, you know, your step and repeat or on your flyer, but try to find a balance. Everything is about building relationships. You know, everybody's going to want a little assignment or nothing. Sometimes they're just happy with nothing. But overall, I would think it would be good to see what you can offer them as well. You know, and it's not always about money, but just what is it that you, that you think will be beneficial? Yeah, it's always about those benefits. You know, so I have, of course... Look, Jermaine, Jermaine was like, make sure you got magazines and a travel book. I was like, okay, so I got my... <laughs> I, of course, have my issue. I bought a couple, and it's so interesting because as soon as I pulled it out, um, my mentor was like, oh, my, that, oh, that's a good-looking magazine, though. That, that's like, that looks really, really good. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all your support as well. I, I did not get to mention it before, but I do appreciate it because things like this, and that was the other thing I was going to say, it's always like, even a lot of the times, I mean, like I said, we do do a lot of paid features, but at the same time, once I see that and I see that relationship there, I don't have a problem with coming back and, and you know, resharing something for someone or re-interviewing them, you know, later on and see how they're doing, like talking about their progress or their updates. But it's about that relationship being there. That's it. And, you know, I'm always, if I go, when I travel, yeah, this is the thing. Because I'm such the quiet person and I just got into taking more photos, <laughs> I'm doing it more now. So when I travel, magazines that I've been a part of, my books, I take pictures with them. And so, like, I'll go somewhere and I'll take a picture and I'll send it to Jermel and say, hey, you know, I'm in L.A. right now. This is a picture but, that I just took. I got to think about the thing, but I know he, he does send me some of it. We actually have, like, a little file now that we're keeping. So they might be in there and I just send some. But that is a great idea. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And that's, that, and that's that relationship piece that, you know, Fancy was talking about is, okay, what are you, uh, listen, I get it. You're in the magazine. Okay, now what are you going to do? <laughs> right. And, and that's the thing, because I'm not going to lie. Like, I've even had um, people pitch, like, publicists would pitch me for a cover. And I'm like, because I started realizing you can put people on the cover of the magazine, and they may still never share it, you know? And that was a really hard pill to swallow, because you have an issue. So, you know, some of those interviews might be, like, eight, ten pages long. So, if I just took that much time to write about you, and you won't even share it, and the publicist was actually like, well, I can't control what my client may or may not post. 
well, I don't think this is the magazine for her. You know, like what kind of, how was that beneficial? Like, I'm not, I'm not even charging you or anything. I just want to make certain that, that, hey, what's the purpose? So yeah, any relationship has, you know, it's supposed to be a balance there. Most definitely. So I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, as, and, and saying, can I tell you that as soon as you said the blogs, I like perked up. That's been one of the things I've been talking to my clients about is that, hello, guest blogging is an opportunity. Pay it attention. <laughs> and there's just starting to listen. I'm going to do myself. I just, people have been telling me, actually, some of my publishing friends have been telling me this for years about like actually doing it myself. But because I was writing so much of the magazine, I never had the time. But now I have a little bit more time because I have more of a team. But before then, I was like, I, I don't have the time. But yeah, it does make a lot of sense. And I saw, honestly, I've saw so many people kind of step into the next phase because they did that. I saw people take people a lot more seriously when they said, oh, you know what? My blog was published in Swagger Magazine. So I know that it's beneficial and it's free. <laughs> so why wouldn't you? That part. So I appreciate you coming on. And guys, yeah, they said it in the comments. This was great information. Not only great information that you'll be able to utilize, like, now, like today, you can leave here today and go and utilize this information and have some success in your business. So let them know how they can get in contact with you and how they can follow you on social media as well. Okay, you want me to just leave it in the comments? No, you gotta tell them too. Oh, my, well, my bad, okay. <laughs> Look, I just, I thought with the other, uh, the other guests and I was like, okay. But anyway, so check us out at swagher.net and that's S-W-A-G-H-E-R.net as well as if you're trying to reach us by email, you can email us at info at swagger.net. We're on Instagram at Swagger Magazine, Twitter, Swagger Magazine. Oh, it's Swag Her. Because remember at first, initially it was for women and then we started to include male content. So it's S-W-A-G-H-E-R.net. Also, we are on Facebook and um, yeah, I think that's, those are like the key places. You will see us other places like if, if you're checking, I'm sorry, but you know, those, that's the main places that we are, that we are. Right. Thank you so much, Teresa. <laughs> That's it right there, guys. So I, you know, again, this is great information. It's information that you can implement now. And no matter if you're an entrepreneur, a speaker, an author, when it comes to PR, when it comes to having your voice heard in magazines, podcasts, blogging, guess what? It's necessary. Why? Because of that social proof. And she said it, you know, Google, if you Google your name, some of y'all may still have a MySpace page. I just, I'm just <laughs> going to put it out there. <laughs> I smile still will pop up, I think, too. <laughs> like some of y'all still got MySpace page. So you got to understand that the more you do, the more it comes up. And that whole SEO, you know, right. whatever you've done most recent is going to pop up first. So definitely make sure that you're putting yourself out there. And I appreciate you so much, sis. Guys, listen, we are about to go into another segment. Why? Because Listen, we ain't done yet. We just not done. <laughs> but until next time, don't forget to press it out.